Charlie Zelenov is the self-proclaimed pound-for-pound best boxer in the world, with a record of 341 wins and zero losses. He's taken on some of the best boxers in the world, like Deontay Wilder and Floyd Mayweather, and he's won. So with all this, you might be thinking, how have I never heard of this guy? Well, it's because he took a page out of Steven Seagal's martial arts playbook. There's, there's an old Zen story of two monks that were walking across the bridge, and the junior monk said to his teacher, he said, what is the Buddha nature? And the older monk picked him up and threw him in the water. And lied about basically his entire martial arts career. He claims to be undefeated, but only has one recorded professional fight in which he lost to a guy with a 1 in 13 record. Instead of professional boxing, Charlie has taken to fighting people in his local Planet Fitness to advance his career. Even founding his own boxing league, of which he's, of course, the champion. He's the pound-for-pound pound boxing king, the best boxer of all time. Oh, and by the way, he got a restraining order put on him by Kim Kardashian. YouTube boxing is something that has exploded in the past few years. What originally started as kind of a joke is now not so much. I mean, Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury did 800,000 pay-per-view buys. But back in the day, all that was available online were videos of two dudes fighting in a Florida backyard. Funnily enough, some of these guys went far in their fighting careers, most notably Kimbo Slice and Jorge Masvidal. Charlie was not one of these people. Born in Los Angeles, California, Charlie started his own boxing career where all good boxers do, shit posting on forums about fights that never happened. Charlie would brag, talk smack, and lie on these forums, as was customary. But Charlie took it a step further, calling out big names in the fight game like Chuck Liddell, even approaching the former UFC champion and asking him to fight. Sorry about the guy with his belt, Charlie Z, when you walk into the mall with your family and he put down his belt and calls you out for a fight? Uh, you know, that guy, that guy said something, he, but you know, actually, he asked for a picture at the end. I mean, okay. he never even he really challenged me. I've I seen video of him, it's, it's funny. Charlie would have eventually put his money where his mouth was and finally have an actual recorded fight. Prior to this, it was all from the horse's mouth that horse being Charlie. The fight would be with a man named Andrew Hartley. So if you didn't know this, boxing has a thing where serious boxers will basically fight bums so that they can pad their record and make themselves look better. These bums are known as cans or tomato cans because their job is just to get crushed. It's why 37% of the top boxers in each weight division are undefeated compared to only 6% in the top 10 of MMA. Andrew Hartley was a tomato can. His job was essentially to get knocked out so people could pad their records. At the time of fighting Charlie, he only had one win and 13 losses. Despite this, during their fight, Andrew pieced up Charlie bad, even knocking him through the ropes at one point. Charlie got frustrated and spit his mouthpiece out. The referee gave Charlie a warning that he'd be disqualified if it happened again. Surely enough, Charlie kept doing it and was disqualified. Although it's likely he would have lost anyway by TKO or decision. But because it was a DQ, the loss didn't count. So Charlie, in his mind, was still undefeated. Before we continue with the video, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Aura. Quick question. Have you ever Googled yourself and noticed that your info is exposed on one of those public listing sites? Do you get scam calls so often that you don't even answer your phone anymore? I get them so much that if I don't recognize a number, I just ignore it. Well, this happens because data brokers make fortunes selling your information to robocallers and spammers, and that's where today's sponsor comes in, Aura. Aura will find data brokers exposing your info and submit opt-out requests on your behalf, which legally the brokers have to remove if they're asked to. The process can be a pain to do on your own, but with Aura, they just do it all for you. Also, it's super easy to set up, so you don't have to download a million apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, a VPN to change locations, password management, identity theft, and credit score help. Let Aura do all the work so you don't have to. You can either let people keep exploiting your data and profit off your private information, or you can use my link on screen and in the description right now to start your free two-week trial. This was the last win of Andrew Hartley's career, and he'd go on to retire after losing 15 more fights after this, with a record of 2 wins and 28 losses. 
Charlie decided pro boxing wasn't for him, so he went to the amateur circuit to pad his record. And by amateur circuit, I mean challenging people to fights in his local gym. Basically what Charlie would do was challenge people to a light sparring match, or even just asking them to drill techniques with him, typically with little to no contact. People accept, only to get sucker punched by Charlie when they're not ready. They give up and Charlie calls this a win. It usually ends in one of two ways, Charlie cheap shotting the person or him getting absolutely destroyed by somebody. Even worse than this was Charlie offering to teach them some boxing techniques, them agreeing, then Charlie assaulting them until they told him to stop. I just want to reiterate this. He was assaulting random people in a gym to pad a fake boxing record. However, all of these wins were considered legit by the UBF or Underground Boxing Federation, which was founded by Charlie and is not recognized by literally anybody other than him. He also talks mounds of shit. <laughs> After padding his record a bit by fighting fathers who were attempting to use the treadmill on their day off, he decided to start calling out professional boxers. This included Floyd Mayweather Sr., who he challenged to a boxing match at the Mayweather Gym. After getting lit up, Charlie pretended to quit only to sucker punch Floyd afterwards. Being in his gym, it went just as you'd expect. He also challenged one of the consensus hardest hitters in boxing history, Deontay Wilder, to a fight. And Charlie spewed some vile stuff at him, calling him racial slurs, threatening to murder him in front of his daughter. I mean, not even really trash talk, just vile shit. Obviously, this is stupid to say to anybody, but we are talking about one of the hardest punchers in boxing history, who at this point had 31 wins and zero losses. So Wilder brought him in, got him to sign a waiver and they had their match and the result was stunning i'm actually stunned to even know this you wouldn't believe it wilder completely brutalized charlie in one of the most satisfying beatdowns in the history of one-sided beatdowns a representation of the parable talk shit get hit Despite destroying him, Deontay held back a bit when he probably could have killed Charlie if he wanted to. This didn't stop Charlie from claiming this as a win later on. Now at this point, Charlie was such a despised person for his cheap shots, vicious verbal assaults, and more, that there's a compilation of him on YouTube losing that has almost 30 million views. He also called out heavyweight boxer Dejon Daniels, who ended up choking Charlie out in an improvised MMA fight until he admitted that he had finally lost. Say one. You are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Only to walk that back later. Charlie was either completely delusional. I'm kind of retarded. Or a very good troll. He claimed he'd beaten Shannon Briggs, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, name a famous boxer, and Charlie probably has a claim of victory on them. Now, these are clearly the acts of a troll, right? There's no way this guy's serious. I mean, his videos were going super viral. Seeing somebody as scummy as Charlie getting knocked out is about as satisfying as you'd expect. And from this, he started to gain fans. And I use that term very loosely. Fans in the same way that Dark Side Phil has fans. It was a mix of people who would insult him and point out his obvious delusions and people who fed into said delusions so they could continue to see the train wreck. Comments like, yeah, Charlie, keep making videos. We all know you're the best undefeated Z money. But people still weren't sure if he was a troll or just completely insane. Is he a mastermind at manipulating people and getting attention? Unfortunately, I don't think so, but I could see why people believe that. I mean, the guy clearly loses a fight, claims he wins, and then brags about it. It's either a troll or complete delusion. However, those arguments are harder to buy when there are confirmed stories of Charlie finding random people, challenging them to a fight, and then paying them to take a dive while he recorded it. He allegedly paid this man, who was a guy he met in a parking lot, to take a dive. Now there's fixing a fight to make money for gambling reasons or prestige reasons. While not ethical, at least it makes sense. It's a totally different thing to fix a fight that doesn't even matter and paying some random dude to take a dive 
in order to make you look good. I guess it also pads his non-existent record, and he even managed to get a rematch with Andrew Hartley after this, the guy who beat him in his official boxing match. And like you'd expect, Charlie sucker punched him in the change room before the fight even started, thus getting it cancelled. Now, this is a significant event because it was captured on video here, and you'll see Charlie's father say something very interesting. His mom has psychological problems. Now this could be a father trying to get his idiot son out of a sticky situation, but it could also be somewhat true. Now let's put the boxing stuff aside for a minute and focus on something else. Kim Kardashian. At a certain point, Charlie developed a crush on Kim Kardashian, constantly talking about her on his Instagram, YouTube, and other social medias. And by crush, I mean he started stalking her. He'd post rambling videos addressed to her, where it seemed like he thought he was in an actual relationship with her, even claiming that they'd hooked up at a certain point. Charlie then started contacting a Los Angeles restaurant that she would frequent in an attempt to get close to her. Yeah, remember I left my number for, for Kim? He's uploaded thousands of hours of these videos, by the way. And he took it to the next level by standing outside of her house asking to be let in. Now, fortunately, after being notified of this, Kim Kardashian filed a restraining order against Charlie, claiming that she feared for her life, and I honestly don't blame her. He also tried the same thing with Nicki Minaj and made this recording while waiting outside of a car dealership for her. Nicki! Come here right now! This makes the troll arguments harder to buy and the delusion ones start to seem a bit more real. He's also gotten arrested multiple times for robbery and, of course, assaulting someone in a gym. This has led to Charlie developing lol cow status. Something that people on the internet sit there and laugh at. They even get involved with him, like in this case, where they ordered pizza to his house, which ended with him assaulting the delivery driver. Oh, motherfucker. Now these are either the actions of the world's best character actor or of a man who is clearly sick. I went into this video thinking it would be fun and lighthearted, but no, it's kind of disturbing if you think about it. I really believe Charlie has some mental problems, but does that excuse him of being a stalker, bully, and criminal? I don't think so. I don't care what's wrong with you. There's no excuse for going up to someone in a gym and tricking them into getting assaulted if that even makes sense. Whether you think Charlie's a bully, troll, mentally ill, or some unholy mix of all of the above, he is one thing, no doubt. The internet's most hated boxer. But what do you guys think? Is this guy a troll or a man who is clearly having some sort of mental problem? While I'm leaning towards mental problem, he could be just one of the greatest trolls of all time. I mean, we've all been fooled by them before.